Hi, my name is Savas Androniku and I'm a radiologist working in Africa trying to help uh, radiologists and non-radiologists interpret chest x-rays in children. This particular lecture is five lessons for reading a frontal chest radiograph. Uh, it's one of my seven minute snippets and it's just a short account of some conceptual difficulty that I had when first starting to read a chest, chest x-ray in a child. And uh, I think it's most useful for non-radiologists wanting to start interpreting their chest radiographs uh, taken in the field. So let's get going with this. The first lesson is that x-rays are just black and white. If you stop thinking about the shades of gray in between, then you can start realizing that the majority of structures are white and anything containing air is black. So I've put on the left a normal chest x-ray. Uh, this is an adult, and you can see the areas that I've pointed out, the trachea, which contains air, the lung, the stomach, and bowel below the diaphragm, all contain air and are therefore black. So you have to keep in mind that a normal healthy lung should be full of air and should be black because the x-ray is usually taken with a patient having inspired. An abnormal chest x-ray on the left demonstrates to you left-sided disease in the lower portion of the lung and that's all become white and in the center of all this there appears a cavity which contains air which is once again black so pathological things may be black or white depending it's just much simpler to consider that you expect the lung to be black and once it's white it's abnormal that's a very simple lesson to learn the next lesson is a spin-off of that but it's a little bit more complicated. People talk about a silhouette sign and it's difficult to conceive where they're talking about an outline, like a lady's silhouette or a shadow, which is what we refer to uh, when we talk about x-ray shadow. Now you can see two different levels of contrast. Contrast is the natural distinction between the black and the white that we've been speaking about. And when there is a white structure next to a black structure, you can be sure that the margin of the structures is very clear. I always tell students that you should be able to take a pencil and draw the outline of the heart and draw the outline of the diaphragm. So I've made a point about that on this slide, showing you the cardiac margin and the diaphragmatic margin, which lie adjacent to very black, aerated and healthy lungs. These margins or the silhouette are very clear and easy to see. When there's pathology, these margins become indistinct or are evaporated altogether. So I'll show you some examples, but first let me show you the example of the lady's silhouette. Now you can look between the arm and the lady's back, there's an area of light. If there's disease and this area of light fills in, I keep an eye on the, shadow in, on the arrow and I add a shadow on that structure. You can see that what was visible on the arm and the outline of the arm has now disappeared because there's disease adjacent to it. I'm just going to go back. You can see the space between the arm and the body. If there were disease, as in lung disease on a chest x-ray, that uh, contrast between the air and the cardiac shadow, for example, will disappear and everything becomes one shadow. Now I want to show you an x-ray example of this. This patient, compared to the normal one in the top left-hand corner, has a pneumonia involving the right upper lobe, pneumonia involving the right middle lobe, and the lower lobe. And you can see how the right cardiac margin and the right diaphragmatic margin have disappeared and all the white structures have become one shadow. Both the disappearance of the margin and the conglomerate shadow are referred to as the silhouette sign. This would be quite obvious, there's no real reason to know the silhouette sign because you can see the pneumonia. But the next example shows you absence of the right cardiac margin in a patient where it might be a little bit more difficult to suspect the pneumonia. So the lesson is this, if the cardiac margin is indistinct, irregular or missing, then that means there's adjacent disease in the lung. This is the silhouette side. So always look at the cardiac margins and the diaphragms and be sure to be able to draw with a pencil the outline throughout their length. The third lesson is to know your outline. 
Now, it's quite difficult to teach people this if they don't have a picture in front of them. So I've shown you some anatomical structures that make up the outline. You can see that the aortic arch makes it a part of the cardiac outline, whether, it's be the, whether it be the ascending aorta or the descending aorta. The left atrium is a small segment of the cardiac outline and the left ventricle. But if you look at the picture on the right, you'll see that the right cardiac margin does not contribute to the outline of the heart. Now, I tell people that if you know which organs or which part of a, an organ uh, is situated in a particular position, you can never make a mistake. I'm going to show you a picture of Homer, Homer Simpson, which is Bart's father. You can see that if we noted a bulging in the anterior part of Homer's silhouette, we would know this is his abdomen. And if we noted a bulging on the back, we'd know that this is probably his bum getting bigger as he eats the donuts. So we don't have to ask a question about which organ is enlarging because we know the organs that contribute to the midriff and the back end of Homer Simpson. So it's the same with the cardiac margin. If the left cardiac margin bulges, then that's probably the left ventricle. The fourth lesson is this. Things are moving around in the chest. And instead of being nervous of this, you should be quite comfortable with moving targets. Now put a target in the top because targets can move all the time. I've also shown you that there are pushing forces in play and pulling forces. So here are some pictures of pushing and pulling in the chest that should help you. Here we have a mass in the mediastinum and you can see that the trachea is deviated towards the left. Here's a bulging exudative pneumonia that's exerting pressure on the mediastinum. And once again, you can see the trachea is deviated towards the left. This is a picture which shows you some fibrosis in the left upper lobe. And again, this is pulling the trachea to the left. The last picture is just to show you that the trachea can move to the right. And this is a collapse of the left, sorry, of the right upper lobe pulling the trachea to the right. So the lesson is to basically use the trachea and the heart, know that it can be displaced by pulling or by pushing, and knowing that it's a moving target helps you make the diagnosis of a mass or a collapse or fibrosis. This is the last lesson of the day and something I had a lot of trouble with. When I used to look at a map of the world, I could never understand why people said that America and Russia were neighbors. Well, it's difficult unless you fold the map over and realize that at the back of the globe, which, would, which we consider the back of the globe, America and Russia touch. And of course, they are neighbors because the world is not flat like a map and the world is round. The same concepts hold for the chest, you see. The chest is a, like a box rather than like a flat piece of paper. So if you look at a frontal chest radiograph and a lateral chest radiograph, you can see that the diaphragms that you see on the frontal radiograph do not indicate the lowermost extent of the lung. If you look at the lateral, you'll see that the lower lobe extends far beyond the anterior domes of the diaphragm. So ideally, when looking at a frontal chest radiograph, you should note that possibly there's lung disease below that level. The same goes if you consider where the lower lobe extends to. Now, if you look at a lateral x-ray, you'll realize that the lower lobe extends far higher than you might think. And on a frontal chest radiograph, may project in the upper zones. So if you'll see the arrow, you'll see that that is the apical segment of the left lower lobe projecting quite high up on the chest. I prefer to refer to zones on the chest rather than lobes because it communicates what you want to say quite easily without having to commit yourself to a lobar distribution. It makes no difference to treatment. I hope we can use these findings for our next lesson, which will help you to systematically review a chest radiograph using these concepts, and then to move on to diagnosing diseases and diseases common in our communities like tuberculosis and HIV. Good luck.